my personal testimony. I have noticed a recent trend here on YouTube of people uh, who will post videos uh, wherein they briefly explain <coughs> <coughs> excuse me uh, they briefly explain why they believe in God if they do how they came to have faith or why they don't believe in God if they do not so believe and often the unbeliever once did believe in God and so they're explaining how they came to lose faith I thought I'd throw my hat into the ring and give my own personal testimony of coming into a relationship with Almighty God. It all starts with my brother. He is much older than me and so has been more like a father uh, than a brother to me over the years. I also have a sister who has been like a mother to me because uh, she's much older. I, I was. Uh, uh, for all intents and purposes, an only child, even though I do have, have siblings. Um, at any rate, um, my brother, um, I love him very much, uh, though to be honest, I don't tell him that very often, uh, not nearly as often as I should. When I was a freshman in high school, he invited me to go to church with him, and this would have been for either Christmas or Easter. I, th I believe it was Easter, uh, if memory serves. Prior to this time, I had never been to church before. Excuse me. And I really wasn't raised in a religious environment either uh, up until this time. And I, I remember my mother asking me once if I wanted to go to church. And, and again, she wasn't going to church herself, but she asked me if I wanted to go. And I told her that, uh, no, I, I didn't want to go because I thought it would be uh, boring. At any rate, I agreed to go with my brother on this particular occasion. And I only went, uh, I went more and more to church as time went on uh, with him. I only went a little bit at first, Christmas and Easter. Then I started, then I started attending uh, services more and more. When I first started attending there, the pastor, whose name is Steve, was getting ready to finish his pastorate there, and then he was going to plant a church in another uh, city, uh, and of, of the same state where I live. Uh, and, and while listening to his sermons, I had an overwhelming sense that he that what he was saying was completely true. I just knew that what he was saying about God and Jesus and the Bible was all completely 100% uh, uh, gospel truth. As time went on, I heard the gospel clearly explained numerous times and responded to it in faith. I'm not sure when I first became a Christian. Uh, it seems like more of a uh, gradual process than a one-time uh, specific event. Uh, that's, what it, that, 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 that's what it seems like to me. Uh, in retrospect, I don't remember when I first consciously said to myself, quote, I understand and accept the gospel, unquote. Of course, I did not literally say those exact words, uh, but uh, you get the idea of, of what I'm trying to say. I think the first time uh, when I first came to Christ was at a revival camp meeting, and yes, they do still have those revival camp meetings, and that was in 1991 or 92. Uh, but again, it is hazy the exact moment uh, when I went from being a non-Christian to a Christian. And uh, I don't remember the person who was speaking there either. At any rate, um, af after trusting in Christ, I struggled quite a bit with doubt. I in part, this was just the normal thing that all Christians do as they get older and mature in their faith. But a large measure was related to the fact that I have a mental disorder called OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. This is the same impairment which apparently afflicts the fictional television detective Adrian Monk, if you've ever seen the show uh, Monk, M-O-N-K. I didn't obsess about my dead wife like, like he obsessed about his uh, because I wasn't married. I was just, you know, I was still in school. 
but I did obsess about clean, about cleanliness quite a bit, uh, which is ironic because I'm a very messy individual. And I won't uh, take the liberty of showing you my apartment uh, because it's quite messy. <laughs> uh, what, what I did obsess about a lot in those days was, was going to, to hell. For example, I was afraid that I didn't really believe in God, and so he would send me to hell for my lack of faith. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense if you think about it. Uh, you know, if there's no God, then there's no hell for him to send me to, or there's no him to send me to, to hell uh, either. Uh, but uh, obsessive-compulsive uh, persons have a lot of irrational fears, and I did not know that I was obsessive-compulsive at that point in time uh, either. I noticed, I know, I've noticed something in retrospect uh, with respect to my early struggles with doubt, which I find very troubling. And the the common response that I that I was getting when I would talk to uh, pastors and, and so on was that they would they would pray with me that God would make Himself r real to me. Now that's not a, a problem, of course. Prayer is a good thing. Um, God answers prayer and it helped him in my case. The problem is not what they did do to help me struggle through my doubts, but what they did not do. For the most part, as I remember it, they did not present me with solid apologetics. I think the first step should have been prayer, but then after the prayer, the second step should have been them telling me about this or that book that I could read, uh, and of course, this this was uh, before or, or right at the beginning of of the internet, and, and so there really wasn't a lot of resources available outside of uh, getting a particular book. Uh, you couldn't really go online and and look at at things. In fairness, though, I hated reading at that time, and they probably asked me if I liked to read, and I probably told them that I that I did, do not like to read. I'm glad that I changed tastes in that department. I love to read now. And I find that my own experiences with doubt, uh, with, with, with religious doubt, is actually fairly common. Uh, one's, uh, you know, somebody will go to their pastor and they'll say, well, just believe or just have faith or, or they'll, they'll pray with you, but they won't really help you themselves deal with your, your doubt. They won't answer your questions. Uh, this is so tragic because so many professing ex-Christians have openly admitted that this is why they left the faith. They had questions which weren't getting answered, but the answers are there. We do our brothers and sisters in Christ a grave disservice when we don't give honest answers to their honest questions. If we don't know the answers, then we can try to find it out. It's the least we can do. Uh, there's got to be somebody uh, in our churches uh, or, or that's written a book or online that has the answer, a good answer to the good question that is causing the trouble. Excuse me. As time went on, I became more firm in my faith and more knowledgeable of apologetics. I think there is a lot more to strong faith than, uh, than just apologetics, uh, but for me it is an important aspect. Not the be-all, end-all, mind you, but it certainly doesn't hurt. And I eventually stopped struggling with doubt. Not completely, of course. I struggle with doubts from time to time, just like, like everybody. Uh, but it's not as intense. Many of my heroes, uh, who are even Christian apologists, admit that they, too, struggle with doubt. So if they struggle with doubt, uh, then uh, the normal people like us uh, are going to struggle with doubt as well, uh, but but it's not as intense uh, as I as I said, a and I think that some doubt is to be expected, uh, even healthy and desirable, uh, in a Christian's life. Um, but the doubt that I had then would be not good if it you know continued indefinitely. All right, I'll pick up there uh, in video number two, and that should finish the uh, testimony. Thank you.